Pennsylvania was ranked the third most moved to state for retirement. So I'm gonna go over some of the major reasons why you should and shouldn't make Pennsylvania your retirement destination. I specialize in helping people just like you make the move to Pennsylvania. All of my contact information is below and let's get into it with the first pro of retiring in Pennsylvania, which is the location. Pennsylvania is so centrally located that just about no matter where you live within the state, you're close to so many incredible places. You're just an hour or two from the Jersey Shore with its beautiful beaches. Besides the shore, Pennsylvania residents also choose to vacation in Virginia Beach, only a five hour drive away, or you can consider Florida with a 12 hour drive or a three hour plane ride. Depending on the location within Pennsylvania, New York City is just a two hour commute along with Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, which are two more incredible cities. If your retirement plans include a lot of travel, Pennsylvania has five international airports scattered all throughout the state. Another major deciding factor for why people are choosing Pennsylvania for retirement are all the incredible tax benefits. Retirement income is not taxed in Pennsylvania, meaning all payments from 401ks, IRAs, and Social Security are fully tax exempt, which can definitely add up to a significant amount of savings as the years go on. If you're 60 or older, your pension is fully tax exempt. In addition, there are also some property tax and school tax rebates that you could get potentially as well. Pennsylvania has a 6% sales tax, but with full exemptions on categories such as groceries, clothing, and medications. Plus for those chilly winters, all heating fuel is fully tax exempt as well. Although I'm not coming up on retirement, a lot of my clients and also personally, one of my favorite things about Pennsylvania is the diverse living options. Many people have different ideas for what retirement looks like to them. For example, some people wanna live in a cabin in the middle of nowhere with acres upon acres of land, while others might wanna live in a major city or a popular suburb where there is plenty of walkability with shopping and dining all throughout, or it could be kind of a mix of both. No matter what your retirement environment looks like, you could certainly find a house that matches each and every type of environment that you're looking for here in Pennsylvania. Speaking of living, let's go over one of the most important categories, which is the cost of living here in PA. The average price of a home throughout the entire country is $360,681 compared to the average home price throughout the state of Pennsylvania, which is only $269,246, almost $100,000 more affordable than the US average. Keep in mind that these numbers are both just averages. Yes, you could certainly find a home below these numbers or significantly above it. It really comes back to what you're looking for when it comes to a house and also what the specific location would be as well. Now let's go over the general everyday cost that you'll see by living here in PA. According to bestplaces.net, if the US has a cost basis average of 100, the overall cost of living in Pennsylvania is 5.4% lower at a rating of 94.6. Let's quickly break down those daily cost of living categories to see what that looks like compared to the average for the entire country. Starting with grocery at only 0.3 above the national average, the health score at 101.1, which we'll talk about a little later in the video. But overall, I think this rating is due to the more rural parts of Pennsylvania where maybe the hospitals aren't as great or it's pretty far away. Those factors could come into this rating. The housing is significantly below the US average at only 80.5. Utilities are also below the national average at 98.2. Transportation comes in at 104. And I believe that that's due to, unless you plan to live in more of the populated areas, the cost of living for this category really comes down to which parts of Pennsylvania have public transportation as opposed to those where you'll need a car for every type of travel, no matter where you're going. The middle of the state doesn't have those options for public transportation because you're essentially living in the middle of nowhere. Miscellaneous came in at 1.5 points above the national average as well. One of the most important things when it comes to retirement is healthcare. And you not only wanna live in close proximity to healthcare, but also highly rated healthcare. The good news is that Pennsylvania and more specifically the Philadelphia metro area is known for its healthcare. Actually one in six doctors throughout the entire country Country was trained right there in Philadelphia. Philadelphia and the suburbs around it have some of the highest rated hospitals and doctors throughout the entire country, such as the University of Pennsylvania Hospital, Jefferson Health, Lehigh Valley Health, Doylestown Hospital, Mainline Health, and that's just to name a few. 
So now let's move over to the cons of living in Pennsylvania, starting with the weather. It's no secret that Pennsylvania experiences all four seasons throughout the year. Although most of the year, Pennsylvania is truly beautiful in every season, and especially when the seasons change, we do still deal with some very hot, humid weather during the summer and the frigid winters. Starting with spring, the temps are typically between 50 to 70 degrees. And for the most part, this is one of the most beautiful seasons as everything blooms. The summer season temps range from about 75 to 90 degrees, sometimes a little higher. The one thing that you really need to know when it comes to a Pennsylvania summer is that sometimes it can get very humid. Nothing like the humidity down in the South, but compared to say the West Coast, it is significantly more humid here on the East Coast. The fall season typically starts around the 70s and ends closer to around the 40s. The fall is also so many people's favorite season as the leaves change colors. Those back suburban tree-lined roads are breathtaking that time of year. Now for the winter. Pennsylvania winters can be pretty harsh, but truthfully, it really depends on the year. Some years will receive multiple feet of snow and it'll feel like the 30s all winter, but we also have a couple of recent winters where we only receive a few inches of snow and temps that range from the high 30s into the 40s. And sometimes we'll get lucky with a day or two that are, reaches the 50 degree mark. Speaking of weather, let's go over the allergies in PA as well. Since we experience all four seasons, the lush and green trees can produce a significant amount of pollen and can really affect some people people's allergies. The pollen and as all the trees and plants bloom can really impact everyone differently. Personally, I suffer from severe allergies, but some people are not affected at all. If you've never been to Pennsylvania, I highly recommend to come and take a trip and visit not only to get a feel for the area, but also to see how the allergies impact you, if at all. I've had clients who have moved from out of state into Pennsylvania and they've had horrible allergies in their past state, but have no reaction at all here in PA. Another one of the major cons about retiring here in Pennsylvania is the very old infrastructure. Compared to other states, typically down south or out west, where they have brand new bridges, four to five lane highways, beautiful paved roads, etc. Well, Pennsylvania is definitely not like any of that. Our bridges are old, our highways are typically only two to three lanes each side, but the number one complaint about the infrastructure here in Pennsylvania are the horrible potholes. The reason that we have such bad potholes here in Pennsylvania is because of our weather and season changes. Going back to what I said earlier, we could have tons of snow and then we'll have one day in the 50s, which will then melt most of that snow. All of the, the rainwater and the, the melting snow gets into those small little cracks in between the road. But at night, when temperatures significantly drop, water expands, turns into ice, and well, that's how we get potholes. Although all of the road crews throughout the state try their best to fill all of the really bad potholes before the next winter starts, it seems like by the time they have all the major ones filled. We're right there at winter and it really is just a full cycle. If Pennsylvania seems like a great place for you to retire, I would love to help you find your perfect home. All of my contact information is below.